there, gang. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matt Capucci, in Florida. Helene is rapidly intensifying, soon to be in the Gulf of Mexico. We have 24 to 30 hours before it arrives. Now is the time to prepare. It's set to make landfall in the Big Bend of Florida as a Category 3 or maybe Category 4 hurricane, but it's a biggie. Top 10% of hurricane sizes, meaning it spreads impacts across the entire state of Florida. That means gusts over 75 miles per hour for several major metro areas in central and northern Florida. Meanwhile, those strong winds push water against the coastline, piling water ashore, leading to a dangerous and potentially life-threatening storm surge. Five to eight feet likely in Tampa Bay. Farther north, though, where that center makes landfall, 10 plus feet of surge possible in the Big Bend. We always tell folks, run from the water, hide from the wind. That's why evacuations are underway right now in many municipalities. I also expect a few tornadoes beginning tomorrow. Now, I'm in Orlando right now, soon to head to Perry, Florida to chase this thing, likely somewhere in the Big Bend. Follow me on social media, follow my radar, and be ready for a live stream as this thing makes landfall tomorrow. So diving in right now, we see this thing has what we call the shrimp look. It looks like a big kind of curly cue. It's really tightening up. It's spinning. It is roiling with convection or thunderstorm activity. It's beginning that process of rapid intensification, and it has kind of that look, the ominous look. The hurricane hunt Hunters recently flew through it. They found a more symmetric wind field, meaning the whole thing is kind of vertically stacked. It's not knocked off kilter, and because of that, it can really strengthen quickly. Truth be told, I don't see many limiting factors holding it back right now. Sea surface temperatures are red hot. We have near record oceanic heat content. There's a lot of fuel out there, and at the same time, we have spreading winds aloft in the upper atmosphere, fanning air away at the high altitudes, getting rid of the exhaust, meaning the more that goes away out the top, the more heat comes in the bottom and the faster the storm strengthens. On satellite, you can see that high altitude exhaust fanning away. That's why it's a little bit overcast right now over Florida. You might see those high, thin, wispy clouds. That is the exhaust. Now, weather models still have a landfall occurring sometime tomorrow evening in like the Big Bend, maybe northern Nature Coast near like Cedar Key, as far west as like Apalachicola, somewhere in there. That's where winds will gust over 115 to 120 miles per hour at the coastline, causing swaths of tornado-like damage. But look how big this thing is. Big swath of 90 plus mile per hour gusts, and I'd say probably Tampa, maybe Orlando gets clipped by the 75 plus mile per hour gusts, depending on how this evolves. So again, a lot of wind for a lot of people. I think widespread power outages are likely across central northern Florida and pretty much the entire panhandle. Now, another thing too, initially we thought this would come ashore around like supper time, but now I think maybe seven, eight o'clock tomorrow night for the actual landfall. If we have just a few more hours over the open ocean with this thing sitting over the warm waters, it might strengthen even more, meaning a category four is possible. Moreover, the storm is moving quickly inland, meaning that eye wall will kind of stay together somewhat and penetrate farther inland than normal. That means a bigger footprint of winds reaching all the way into Georgia. In addition, the quicker arrival of the storm means a faster and more abrupt storm surge with water coming ashore much more quickly. Like we said, run from the water, hide from the wind. Serious storm surge is possible and likely we'll just see entire communities inundated. From the freshwater flooding standpoint, four to eight inches of rain are likely localized 10 plus inch totals and that threat of tornadoes as well as especially Thursday across central and northern Florida. And on Thursday, a couple spiral rain bands ahead of the actual circulation could cause tornadoes across central and northern Florida. There is that risk right there. The Storm Prediction Center advertising that risk. I think we might see one or two spiral bands sneak north later on this afternoon or this evening. Early squalls, kind of the appetizers of this thing, but ultimately the worst impacts get here tomorrow. I think the tornado risk grows also tomorrow as the wind field gets closer and really starts to influence our atmosphere. All told, this is not one to mess around with. There is a high ceiling here, a high potential intensity of this storm. It would not take much to realize all the fury in the atmosphere. So please, take it seriously. Check up on loved ones, neighbors, elderly, vulnerable populations, folks with mobility issues. Make sure everyone has a way to get to a safe place. Evacuate from the coast if need be, if you are susceptible to surge. Shelter yourself from the wind. Do whatever you need to do to stay safe, but please stay tuned and please stay safe. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, and Windows.